The sacred Jayasri Mahabodhiya in the sanctimonious city of Anuradhapura in Sri Lanka is the oldest known and historically significant tree for millions throughout the world. It is the living sapling from the original bow tree that stood with Lord Buddha during his victorious journey to enlightenment. It was brought to Sri Lanka in 288 BC by the daughter of the Indian Emperor Asoka, Arhat Sangamit. Since then, it was looked after by the Mahasangha for nearly 2,370 years in the midst of insurmountable difficulties to protect the sacred tree from foreign invaders and non-believers. Fortunately, having survived from all these tyrannical efforts. Today I see a different threat to its health affecting due to the global warming and structures that has been erected erroneously beside the sacred tree. The Srima Bodhiya is not an alien place to me. I have visited the sacred site many times in the past to pay homage. In November of 2018, I surged in Sri Lanka en route to the US having engaged myself on a research project about Kapilavastu in Nepal and in India. Anuradhapura was my last stop. During this visit, I captured close-up photos of the sacred tree with the aid of my telescopic lenses. The photo shows a close-up view or a shot of the frail leaves, yellowish, spotted, weak and withered, and also in abundance among the branches. Then again, turning yellowish during seasonal variations and shedding prior to sprouting new buds in bow trees, especially in bow trees, is not unusual. I arrived at the holy site close to noontime when the sun was shining brightly beaming fiercely hot. The sandy temple grounds were also too hot even to walk barefooted. The gates to the upper court, the Udamalua, were closed for routing upkeep. I stood with the devotees waiting at the lower gate steps for the opportunity to enter the Udamalu or the upper court. Suddenly, without notice, a scanty shower began to fall. It was not sufficient even to wet the surrounding. I hurried 
and took shelter at the security gate security guard post while some devotees decided to brave the shower from my vantage point standing underneath the beneath the uh, eaves of the security guard post i could see clearly the east branch of the sri mahabodhya my attention drew to a cascade of vapor emanating and diffusing from the rooftop the rooftop below the branch and rising up towards the sacred branch it was visible for a few minutes even after the drizzle had died down my immediate thoughts were the possibility of heat affecting the tree resulting due to the flume of hot air hugging the leaves and the branches the flume was due to convection created by the heated mass of hot air and it will continue to exist until the roof surface remain hot the lofting of the hot air may not be seen or visible to the naked eye unless there was uh, water vapor or some coloration mixed with the flow of air this thermodynamic process will no doubt affect the health of the stima bodhi also i could see the metallic props with chains supporting the sacred branch the photo shows the props used to support the east branch of the sri mahabodhi metallic props or struts are conducive in providing support to heavy loads however these props could contribute an unwarranted uh heat by conduction and radiation hot objects emits heat in the form of uh, rays or waves and moves through space like one when you feel sitting in front of a fireplace or around a campfire see i'm not a botanist or a physicist but it is my humble opinion the heated roof below the sacred east branch and the supporting metallic structures the props and the metallic chains have an adverse effect to the sacred tree due to heat being transferred or transmitted by conduction convection and radiation my gut feelings were to investigate and initiate a further study to address this matter as soon as possible instinctively my first thoughts rained on me was to discuss this matter 
with the chief abbot of the Mahabodhi Bomalua temple. With some difficulty, I was, I, I was able to obtain permission to enter the premises of the temple residence. It was located within the boundary of the site of the sacred tree itself. I met with Kirinde Jnananda Darshanathero, assistant to the chief monk, Venerable Dr. Pallegama Sirinivasa. After a lengthy conversation, expressing my concerns in surfeit, I was able to bring a trickle of cognizance to the Venerable Thero and to the devotees who anxiously were listening. The expressions of everyone listening to me showed a ghastly concern. Venerable Jnananda Thero hurried inside to the residence and uh, came back with a note for me. His words and demeanor made me believe that he had explained the graveness of the situation to the chief priest. The note read or it had a cell number, his information and the information of the chief monk with a business card attached and he asked me to call the number and talk to Mr. one Mr. Bhatia Sumitra Rache, the botanist who was in charge of the health of the Sri Mahabudhi. I did not hesitate. I called him immediately. A useful uh, conversation pursued regarding the matter and even he asked me to come and visit him in Kandy. Unfortunately, that night I was on a flight I had to catch a flight back to back home to the United States. After arriving back home and having fought off my jet lag, I continued with the research of the temperature effect on the Sri Mahabodhya and to its branches due to the structures below. First, discussing my concerns with two eminent scientists, Professor Dr. Eric Seberg of University of California, Irvine, and with Jeff Truster, a structural engineer in California, both of whom I knew very well and had the confidence that they would help me in this matter. After examining my photographs and listening to the crux of my conversation with Mr. Bhatia Sumitra Arachi, they both agreed that the temperature effect on the Srima Bodhya need to be further investigated or studied with in-situ research methodologies and experimentation as a priority. And before it is too late. There was ample evidence of harm and in all probability due to the thermal effect to the sacred tree caused by heat radiating from the roof below. Either the roof was with metallic or clay material. The photo shows a base of prop attached to the metal roof tiles. The structure beneath 
is about 6 to 10 feet below the east branch of the Jayasri Mahabodhya. And the roof cover is over 2,000 square feet, in my estimation. And this will provide uh, a conducive high thermal capacity plate that will heat up and reflect, radiate the heat to the branch and to the leaves. Abundance of withered leaves that are seen are evidence of this observation. The roof heats up fast and will retain the heat for a very long time. And if it is made out of metal, it could heat up to twice more than the ambient temperature. There is scientific evidence that a rooftop will reach 60 degrees centigrade more than the ambient temperature in sunlight. The dual coloration on the bark seen on the east branch of the sacred tree is evidence of heat affecting, heat and moisture affecting the branch. Also, there is the probability of conducting heat from the metal props, scaffolding, chains, metal chains, and by the saddles to the east branch of the tree. Due to the smaller surface area of the props, it has a lesser thermal capacity compared with the roof and therefore heats up fast and could conduct a, a little dose of heat energy to the branches and to the leaves of the sacred tree. The, a perfect example of this is vines that are on metal fences wither easily and in most cases die due to the summer heat in comparison with the ones that are on trees or on wooden fences. I made a list of recommendations that were provided to Mr. Bhati Yasumitra Rachi and to Venerable Dr. Palyagama Srinivasa. These are the uh, recommendations on situ temperature measurements to be taken and uh, monitored, the tile roof temperature to be monitored with temperature sensors, ambient temperature measurements should be also monitored. Temperature of the props at the saddles should be monitored also using temperature sensors. Temperature of all uh, metallic objects such as chains, etc. should be monitored. The moisture content of the leaves should be monitored ran uh, randomly or measured randomly. This Observations will indicate if there are any adverse effects due to the heat transfer to the sacred tree. If found, appropriate measures should be taken, should be then taken without delay. Uh, the measures should be such as Automatic sprinklers should be installed 
to control the temperature of the roof. The saddle should be cushions such as with cork material. And uh, provide composite props or struts, a metal and wooden strut, so that the heat will not be conducted to the towards the branch. I wrote to Venerable Dr. Pallegama Srinivasa, the chief abbot of the Bomalva Vihara, and to Mr. Bhatia Sumitrarachi, the botanist in November of 25th, 2018, giving a comprehensive account of the findings and stress the urgency to investigate further to the possibility that heat from the metal roof and the supporting structures, the metal structures could have a detrimental effect to the health of the Sri Mahabodhiya and the list of recommendations were included. At the early stages of our discussions, an evaluative concerns were expressed, but I have not heard from Dr. Venerable Pallegama Srinivasa or by Mr. Bhatches Mitrarachi since. The letter was hand delivered by Dr. Yashmi Virasekara and also digitally via electronic mail with comprehensive details and photographs supporting the evidence. It seems all that was regarding the Sri Mahabodhya has gone to the wayside and disregarded. I believe the correspondences and the conversations I had with both uh, Mr. Sumitra Rachi and the Venerable Pallegama Srinivasa are of paramount importance and need to be brought to the attention of the Mahasangha, the general public and to the Ministry of Buddha Sasana in Sri Lanka. Before the health of the East Branch of the Sri Mahabodhya deteriorate any further. On January 12th, 2019, I spoke to Mr. Bhatia Sumitra Rachi uh, around 9 a.m. Pacific time by phone. I was greatly disappointed by his answers. In explaining the withered leaves, he said during the month of November, the leaves shows withering signs. Is, uh, is, is, is normal because they lose chlorophyll. Like what you would see in your part of the world uh, due to the uh, seasonal changes. Regarding the props, he asked me if I was suggesting to install wooden props. I said no. You can have composite wooden and metal props with cork or carbon fiber and cushion saddles. He did not respond but kept on saying the chains have been recently looked at by some railway engineers. The conversation lasted back and forth for nearly 15 minutes without much headway to what need to be done. So it is now in the hands of the Mahasangha, people of Sri Lanka and the Ministry of Buddha Sasana to investigate 
the validity of, validity of my concerns and initiate a program to evaluate by a scientific study to safeguard the health of the Sri Mahabodhiya. Thank you very much for listening. Thirguan Sarvani.